Hey there, folks, and welcome back to another episode of our venture in the game, Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, that is. Not Doki Doki Literature Club, but the plus version, which means there's extra. But in the meantime, we are going through the main courses of Doki Doki Literature Club so we can get all of the side stories unlocked and then go through that one by one, of course. And please excuse me, I've had a Pop-Tart and a little bit of more of uh, desserts and whatnot, so I'm a little wired during this recording. But hey, you know, y'all know how that is, right? And no, I didn't have one of, you know, Natsuki's pastries, although I probably wouldn't mind that, you know? She probably makes really good pastries, but well, <laughs> Anyways, so as a little bit of recap, in the last episode, we made a new poem. And upon going to the literature club after general classes, of course, we met with Sayori, to which, of course, asked us if we wanted to go to the vending machine with her because apparently she was hungry. But our noble character, to a degree, Sosuke, was like, let me see your purse. And lo and behold, Sayori was broke, literally broke. And then, of course, was made to feel absolutely guilty on her own volition as a means to try to manipulate us, as a means to give her some money so she can buy something. Asked for Yuri for assistance, and Yuri was like, ah, no, keep me out of your retribution there. And then, of course, Sayori got smacked in the face by something, and it turned out to be a cookie, which was given to her by Natsuki. But, of course, not being satisfied with just that one cookie, then went over to Natsuki, and of course bit into her cookie at that yeah and of course before natsuki could even complain to monica come to find out monica was nowhere to be found so then of course where everyone was contemplating as to what it could be why she would not show up it's not like her not to show up comes out she was just busy you know she's just got caught up in the moment because it turns out that she actually practices piano how about that then, of course, in the other portions of the time in the club for that day, Sayori and Sosuke were tasked with the assignment of grabbing supplies to get ready for the festival that's coming up. So they need a construction paper and a half dozen other things to get things going in that regard. So how about that? And then, of course, on the way back, even before then, there was a little bit of a debacle in the closet to which... Sayori bumped her head, and then, of course, she had to get some ice for it, but they didn't have no ice, so he got a cold drink. Sosuke got a cold drink, and at that point, managed to um, get her enough to where she was able to walk and all that. So they went back to the classroom. Of course, Monica asked what the heck happened. Of course, there was a like, psych, ah, don't worry about it, just a bump on the head. But then all that now, of course, comes to the big question, are we ready to share our poems? Let's find out if we are ready to share our poems. So in three, two, one. Let's find out if we are ready to share our poems. Here we go. Yes, I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Who should I show my poem to first? Eh, might as well show it to Sayori. Why not? Here we go. Let's see what she thinks. Sosuke. I really love your poems. I love them like now tomorrow. Yeah! I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. I wouldn't necessarily say I've been hiding them. I mean, I just wrote them last night. Uh, I'm not hiding anything. But, says Sayori, your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. 10 out of 10, folks, 10 out of 10. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. Okay, I'll tell you, I haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Ah! Oh, no way! No way! Not even Natsuki? Uh, we won't get into that. 
Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. Oh my gosh, the soon! The soon! But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? asks Sayori. Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Oh. Oh. Interesting. Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I mean that you're just, you know, a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? You'd be surprised who writes stuff about their own lives. Anyways. <laughs> but you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Uh, wait a minute. Didn't you almost burn your house down when you tried to cook? I mean, I mean, just, just wild. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that face, that face, that face. <laughs> so yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. <gasps> connection. <laughs> your fault for getting in my business all the time. Oh? I don't know if I understand, says Sayori. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> oh, hey. I'm not a kid, you know. Yeah, but you still love it. Head pats are good no matter what age you are. Head pats are awesome. They're awesome. Are you sure about that? Hmm, maybe, says Sayori. Here it starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. I don't see no pencil. Hey, Sosuke, called out Sayori. Will you give me your poem? Uh, sure. I kind of want to keep it. Uh, okay, yeah, there you go. <laughs> huh? Why? Because, says Sayori. Well, it's the first time you've written something for me. Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Giggled Sayori. <sighs> Are you even listening anymore? No, she's not, buddy. She's completely mesmerized. She's gone. She's gone out in the wilderness, way in the yonders of the universe. Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. <gasps> really? What snapped? Uh, what'd you do? I broke my pen. Oh. Wow. Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. Sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Terry clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. You good, cuz? You good? I'm a little clumsy today. You mean she's not always clumsy? <laughs> Giggled.
killed Sayori. Let's sit down, Sayori. Let's just take a breather. Yeah, let's do that, said Sayori. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh? Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Oh, I don't buy that, homie. Jeez, don't worry about it. I'm sure I will like it. Alright, here we go. <laughs> Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. Meow. I reach inside my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles. All in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a star like to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave. Discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Dinging and dinging. Scrapping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty self, my empty shelf, excuse me, could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in comes my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other. Holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards. All over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, echo. Inside my head. Oh my goodness. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did! Exclamated Sayori. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yes, you did say that. Yes, you did. Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Buddy, what's that supposed to mean? Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I'll bet you have. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Asked Sayori. Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thank you, said Sayori. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I... I'm done with my mission here. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. 
I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Who shall I show my poem to next? Well, let's go ahead and show Monica. Hi again, Sosuke. You better not do that lean again. You better not do that lean. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Everybody cross your fingers. All right. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably, replied Monica. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing. Oh my gosh, again with that pose! Again with that! What is going on with this? What is going on with that? With that... All right, all right, all right. Let's let 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 let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. I know it takes a lot of time to make friends with everyone, but Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then too. That sounded a lot like a hint. I'm not like unapproachable or anything, am I? Nah. Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. Nah, don't worry about it. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway... Wanna read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Here we got, save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. Wow, the three colors that can make up all the colors on the screen of your uh, PC screen and everything. How about that? An endless. Cacophony, I think it is. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not that smart. Of meaningless noise. The noise. It won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to look at that. Wait, wait. Is she listening to pink noise? Squeaking. Screeching. Piercing. Sine. Cosine. Tangent. Wait, she listening to sine waves? You listen to a sine wave sweep or something? Good heavens. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. It's even more abstract than your last one. <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. 
says Monica. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> laughed Monica. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. Really? A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You'll never know when you might change your mind, or even when something ex unexpected happens. Wait, is this tip even about writing? No, it's not. It's about something completely different, referencing how to play a video game, everybody. <laughs> what am I even talking about? <laughs> You broke the fourth wall. That's what you did. You broke the fourth wall. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Oh, dear. Okay, let's go ahead and... De you, know, you know, we'll... All right. Let's just deal with Natsuki right quick. Hopefully, she's got a better attitude than yesterday. Well, it's not really any worse than their last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Whew. Huh? Phew, what? Oh, uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Don't, don't even start that. You know exactly how critical you are. Don't even start that. Don't even start that. Wait, maybe that was the comp... <laughs> Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Folks. I can't, I can't do this. I can't. I can't. I'm close to throwing up here. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'd be as good as me someday. Seriously, folks, I am so close to throwing up. That's, uh... Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem for yesterday. Oh, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. You actually can determine stuff like that? But hey, you probably hung around with her a lot, so whatever. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? I got a sneaky suspicion. You jelly. I really think you jelly. How about y'all? Y'all think she jelly? Because I, I think she jelly. I think she jelly. It's like she's dragging around dead weight says the individual who won't budge out of their own, I don't know, delusion? Ugh. That was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it, says Natsuki. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. This soon stuff, folks, drives me crazy. Here. Amy likes spiders. Okay. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. 
That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Uh, Spider-Man, make sure you stay away from her. Not bad, right? Uh, you might want to give me some context on this. It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... Ooh, I see what's going on here. Oh, I see what's going on here. Oh, I see it. That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. Hey, I got my own hobbies and if someone wants to think it's retarded, go right ahead. At the end of the day, they're probably not really doing anything to really excel my life to begin with. And even if they were in that instance, that's just toxic. And none of us need that in our lives, okay? So folk who act like that, just let that stuff roll off, okay? Pursue your hobbies. Just don't hurt nobody, okay? But that just makes people stupid. Yeah, Natsuki, you gotta make sure though that you're careful with that. Because remember, you and Yuri have your own differences about writing styles, but y'all should make sure to respect each other in that regard. So you might want to practice what you preach on there, little sis. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Okay, I can dig that. I can dig that. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Okie dokie. And finally, Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Sorry, Yuri, but I think you're not going to like this one. But let's see. Hmm. Well done, Sosuke. That was unexpected. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Oh, it's nothing. Oh, she's so nervous again. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. 
Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. Let's see what we got. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary. Wait a minute. Is that un unordinary? Yeah, un unordinary. As an unordinary human, I gave the raccoon a piece of bread my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same night, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic pavilion. Wait a minute. I can't tell what that word is, actually. Yeah, I can't tell what that word is. So classic conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. I have no clue. I missed everything in that. Everything. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical I don't know if it's my fault but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about neither can I buddy neither can I <laughs> that's right it's a bit closer to my preferred writing style using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, expresses Yuri, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Uh, that's funny. Oh? Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Oh? She... She did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anyone. She... She's right. Uh, I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's... Well... That's interesting. And that was my phone, folks. <laughs> to me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. 
Oh boy. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Hey, we all make those kind of mistakes, live and learn. Uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry about it, I have no reason to. Oh, <sighs> okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. And let's find out what she has planned as they sit in the front of the room on the next episode. Ah, there's a cliffhanger for you. But I want to thank everyone for watching this video this time around. If you like what you saw, maybe consider leaving a like. And if you would like to see more and you haven't already, maybe consider subscribing. Hit that bell for notifications and also check out other things on my channel. Highly recommended. And until next time, happy mixing, everyone. Oh, <laughs>